Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NXT The Game Season 2, Episode 84. It's the ninth day of the Mega 12 Juniors Tournament. It's me, Mikey Bro, here with the best in the business, my seven-year-old Cohen. What's going on? What up, guys? I'm pretty sure this is my first time on a Mega 12. So. First time on the Mega 12. We got a I'm seven. Sure. Yeah, we got a 70 C plus out the gate, Cohen, with Mr. William Regal, who, as you said earlier, is back. We see Regal in the back looking over the brackets for next week for the rest of the tournament. The tournament that was coming to a close quicker than anticipated, Cohen. Tonight, a huge main event as the undefeated Aleister Black in the tournament takes on Crow. So we're going to go ahead and quickly go through Mega 12, as you all know, because this is just our secondary show. It all is right. fast. Yes, it is fast. Tom Phillips, Nigel McGinnis, and Steve Cranial Cohen welcome us to NXT. Tom Phillips says that tonight on NXT, we're going to have one hell of a show. The camera stands on them for a while as we fade to ringside. So, Cohen, we're nine weeks through the Mega 12 Juniors Tournament. I haven't showed you the standings, but I just told you Aleister Black's undefeated, so obviously he's in first place. We'll look yeah. at the standing at the end of the video. Yeah. We, or maybe um, at the last day of it, we are... Yeah, so there's going to be this... The, yeah, there'll be this one, a ninth, a tenth, eleventh, and then we'll have the Super... Juniors Tournament end. Finale, yeah, and that'll finale. be the week before... Brooklyn 4. Okay. So 67 C plus here. And in the opening contest, if we can get to it, Cohen, in the opening contest, TJP defeats Mark Andrews in 705 with a figure 4 deathlock. The announcing was pretty good, Cohen. 61 for TJP, Andrews with a 47. The storyline has advanced, but not but lost heat. And there was no skill improvements to improve on. Dab on it. Dab on it. Cohen's dabbing for TJP. All right, let's keep going here. The camera smiles as we see the NXT Women's Intercontinental Champion Ruby Riot backstage with her manager and new best friend, the leader of the Elring dynasty, that is Rachel Elring. William Regal walks into the picture as the fans erupt. Rachel immediately asks William why oh why did she have to be here at Mega 12 Junior Contest? She's not even part of the show. Ruby's not in competition, Cohen, and surely the authors of pain are not juniors. Yeah. Regal quickly replies because she isn't answering her phone. Rachel smirks. Regal informs them that tomorrow on NXT, we're going to determine who faces Ruby Riot Cohen at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn for that NXT Women's Intercontinental Championship in a good old-fashioned, over-the-top rope, Battle Royal. Ruby looks up, and when Rachel looks at her, the duo roll the rise at Regal. Regal says, next time, maybe you two should answer your phones. The crowd laughs as we fade out. A big match set for tomorrow night going on NXT TV as Ruby Riot will defeat well, to, to see who she's facing at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, as it will be a 10-woman over-the-top rope battle royal. As you said, AOP are not juniors. They're like main eventers. They are an RSA, but they're also juniors. Remember, like a 205 limit, so they're, they're much above that. All right. And our next match, Bobby Fish defeats Donston nine minutes via submission. Announcing quality gave the match a boost. Bobby Fish had an enemy performance of 55. Donst as well. We've advanced to Cohen. Not much to see here other than Bobby Fish improving his performance skills. 55, C minus. Next, Cohen, we see Crow in the back, the leader of the Crow's Nest. He's getting ready, Cohen, for his match against Aleister Black in the main event. Aleister Black's going to win. We'll see. Guarantee you, bet you $100. $100. Don't take that bet, guys. He doesn't have that. 69, C plus. All right, next up. In an extremely short match, Kyle O'Reilly defeats Dushin Liger by pinfall with the Brain Buster. So there is no skill improvements to improve on here. 56 C minus. Kathy Kelly now is seen backstage and finds none other than the Velveteen Dream. Kathy walks up to Velveteen with a cameraman and asks him what he's doing here. Huh. Velveteen smirks and pulls down his shades. The Dream tells Kathy that he's here scouting, but turns his nose up when looking at her. Selectively. The Dream says back-to-back -back weeks he's defeated Jushin Liger on NXT. Last week he caused a distraction. This week, well, this week, he left Liger to his own devices. And unfortunately, it didn't matter. But that doesn't mean he's done with him. Because next week, the Green Dream goes on to say, Cohen, he has a proposition to make for Liger here on the Mega 12 Juniors Day 10. And he hopes Liger says yes. We don't know what that can be. 
Captain Kelly looked excellent, Cohen. The angle got the crowd hotter. No scale improvements, but a 70C plus. What could Velveteen Dream's proposal be? For scouting, I'm thinking he's going to build up a team. A wow. team and then try getting Lago to build up one. And then at, um, maybe like later on if at a WrestleMania. Um, uh, Legacy, sir. Yeah, WWE take over NXT take over Legacy. Which is our... WrestleMania right. and WWE, if you don't know what that is. But, uh, maybe the, um, Love Dream's Dream gonna try getting Liger to build up a team and then they have a 5 on 5 Survivor Series type match. Whoa, that's a pretty far uh, guess there, Cohen. You yeah, guys, I'm good. You guys, if you were to hear Cohen's guesses, they're pretty ridiculous. 70C plus, he's out there. Yeah, I am like one of the. <laughs> Crazy savages. All right, in a decent match now. Oni Lorcan defeats Cedric Alexander in 7:23 with a fast roll-up. Cedric Alexander Cohen takes a loss here tonight. Oni Lorcan with a surprise roll-up. Cohen. Cedric Alexander with a 55. Lorcan with a 54. The announcing quality improved the match. A 52 D plus here at day 10. Excuse me, day nine of the NXT Mega Twelve Juniors tournament. A uh, 52 D plus. Um, next up, we see Alistair Black Cohen sitting cross-legged and appearing to be meditating. He's getting ready, Cohen, because the man who's undefeated in the Mega 12 Juniors is facing Crow in the main event, which we learned earlier. The storyline has advanced and gained heat. No skill improvements. I'm pretty sure um, Black's going to win because... You already said this. I was going to say because he's unbeatable in this tournament so far. So far, 72. If Crow minus. beats him, it's over. In a decent match, though, Ty Dillinger drew with Roddy Strong in 12-12 following a countout. So, a uh, countout um, into this match, surprising for Roderick Strong. Ty. After the match, the camera catches both Ty Dillinger and Roddy Strong spent, exhausted after being double counted out, Cohen. Roddy Strong is being helped by the referee and had his championship as he looks down, Cohen, and just shakes his head towards the championship. He's not been performing as a champion as of late. Roddy Strong is disappointed. He went to a double counter, and Roddy Strong is dangerously close to not qualifying for the final four. On the finale, 72, B-. minus. All right. The camera now shows a video package for tomorrow night's main event on NXT. It's going to be Aleister Black and the Revival taking on Andrade, Cien Almas, and the Usos. Massive, massive match, Co. Usos. 83, B+. Plus. And in the main event, Aleister Black defeats Crow in nine minutes with the fade to black. 67 for Black, 50 for Crow, Cohen. There's no skill improvements, but that's going to end NXT uh, Mega 12 Juniors Day 9. Let's see what we got. I'm hoping it's a 70, Cohen. Did we get a 70? Oh, I predicted. 69. I, put, I predicted Alistair to win. He did. So this was NXT The Game Season 2, Episode 84 of the NXT Mega 12 Juniors Day 9. Everyone have a glorious rest of your day. day.